What's up guys, Bill here from Evil Olive. Yesterday I put up a couple pictures of these fluorescent starters that I had uh, put some pigtails on and got quite a few comments on it. A couple of people messaged me some questions so I thought I'd do a short video on it. Uh, basically what the premise is, is you take a starter from a fluorescent light bulb and then you wire it in circuit of an incandescent light and when you do that it generates a random pattern and it's based off a mechanical uh, armature inside so we're going to take a look at that and show how I do it, how it all works, and what the theory is. So, uh, welcome to the Olive Jar. So we have our fixture here, and the socket inside comes out of this pigtail. So we got our hot and our neutral. I wire my uh, starters into the uh, hot side. Um, that's the way that most circuits work. Um, I'll explain in a second how the fluorescent starter itself works, but the theory is, is all you're doing is you're taking your, your cord that you're plugging into an outlet, and you're taking the hot wire from that, going into one post of the starter, and then coming out and going to the other one. And we all know what kind of effect that makes, and it's it's random and it's awesome. But um, how? How does this work? <clears throat> the uh, What the starter itself does is it actually creates a voltage spike, and that voltage spike is what arcs across inside the fluorescent tube and ignites the argon gas. And once that's ignited, the lower path of resistance is then through the gas because it's already carrying the electricity, so the starter is no longer needed, so the starter will stop doing its thing once electrical connection is established in the tube. You can barely see that arm and that arm. This is the one that's going to, once it gets hot, it's going to expand out and it's going to touch the other one. So I'm going to plug it in. And you can see the arc there and you can actually see the reflection of the light off the vise. So every time that makes a contact, it turns the light on. And then when the light goes off, it heats back up and reestablishes another contact. So that pretty much works like a little switch. Now that being said, we all know that incandescent bulbs burn out rather frequently, um, you know, depending on use. And obviously the more you turn them off and on, the quicker they're going to go out. So this will eventually burn out, which is why I made a pile of them. Uh, just because what I want to be able to do is I use these Wago connectors. And if I've talked about these before, if you don't already use these, you need to because they're amazing and it's on there pretty good. Uh, they're basically reusable. I mean, it's like a, a fancier wire nut. I use these all the time. They're great for mocking up circuits, uh, for testing things, um, or just something that needs to be, you know, taken apart later. It's not always best to crimp and solder wires together if you're going to be in there servicing or taking something off and using it for something else. So, uh, <clears throat> that being said, all I did was I cut some short leads of wire, uh, just cut the insulation back. I wrapped it around the posts. You could go ahead and solder to this if you want, but if you do, you're gonna have to use a tinning flux uh, because the, the terminals on the, on the starters are, are chrome or uh, some other coating on there, so solder doesn't wanna stick. So you're gonna have to kinda acid etch those with some flux or some tinning solution. Um, but since these, like I said, I'm expecting these to go out rather frequently, I just wrapped the wire around there, got it good and tight, cut the excess off, and then put heat shrink on it. So what I'm going to be able to do is with these Wago connectors is if one of these goes out, I'll be able to change these out in about 30 seconds. So it, I can do it midnight if I need to. All right, guys. So that's it. Um, like I said before, starters, uh, buck fifty to two dollars at Lowe's for a two pack. Um, there are different models. There's the FS2 and the SF5, which are recommended. Now you cannot use LED lights with these. This only works on an incandescent bulb or a CFL bulb, the little twisty fluorescents. Those work good too. Um, it just depends on what kind of light you're going for. Uh, the higher wattage the bulb you use, the more it's going to make it go out quicker, basically. So the lower wattage bulb you have, the longer this is going to last. Because remember, this is essentially attempting to start the fluorescent circuit once the incandescent bulb. So as long as you have that light on, it's going to be like you're flicking a switch on and off. So, you know, there's no telling. Sometimes you can get a season out of them. Sometimes, you know, they might go out in about a night or two. 
So always have extra on hand, but they're cheap and disposable, so that, that's a good thing. Um, so FS2 or FS5 work great. Not with LED lights, get yourself a low wattage incandescent like a stove light, a uh, refrigerator light bulb, or just one of the, you know, whatever circuit you're trying to put this into. Guess that's about it. So once again, thanks for thinking inside the jar.